And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Ryan Metzler. Hey everyone, it's Ryan Metzler here, and today we're going to be taking a look at another Euro game. This time we're going to take a look at Santiago de Cuba, which is a game by Eggert Spiel and Griffin Games. And this is a game for two to four players, uh, as I said, a Euro game, and going to be a game about resource management, in which you're trying to get goods uh, from various people and use those goods and various buildings around the board in order to deliver them for victory points, and whoever has the most victory points at the end of the game is going to win. Uh, you're going to be moving a car around to try and visit these different people to get the goods, and each time you visit a person, you'll be able to use a building associated with one of the colors that person represents. So real quick, why don't we take a look at what you get inside this box, we'll look at how the game plays, and then I'll come back here and give you my final thoughts on it. So here you can see the components for Santiago de Cuba. And this is, as I said, going to be a game about getting resources and using those resources to ship in order to get victory points. So you, here you can see a harbor. Uh, and you can see this car here, which is going to be moving around this track of different people, visiting these people and getting different goods. Each player is going to start with a meeple. They're going to have some property ownership markers, and then they're going to have this car thing here, which is going to be used to hide the goods that they have. And you're going to start with some good that's irrelevant. The first player, uh, or actually the last player, is going to roll these dice. And they're going to take these dice, they'll roll them, and they'll see numbers on them. And this is going to be the demands for the different colors of goods. We have rum, cigars, tobacco, citrus, and sugar, or some type of cane. Anyhow, you'll see that there are different numbers on these dice. They go from one, and some of them go up to two. Uh, some of them go up to four. It depends on which good it is. But they're going to choose four of these dice to make available four resources that want to be shipped out this round. So let's say they choose these four, they get rid of the orange. On their turn, they're going to move this car, and they can move it one space for free. Moving additional spaces is going to cost money. One silver point per additional space they'd like to move in order to skip different guys. So if they wanted to move one, two, three spots, it would cost them two money. The person they stop at is going to let them get certain goods or certain benefits. So we can see here, Martinez gets you three money, Pablo lets you get any one good. Conchita lets you get two citrus. Uh, El Zorro is going to let you steal from each player one money, one good, or one victory point, their choice. Jose gets you two sugar. Pedro gets you two tobacco. Maria gets you two money, or two victory points. Alonzo is going to be a little bit different, we'll come back to that, and Miguel gets you two woods. Alonzo is going to let you buy a building that isn't currently owned. Buying these buildings doesn't cost you anything, but unless you put a property marker on it showing that you own that building, and then when other players visit it, you're going to earn a victory point. When you land on a spot, you're going to first get whatever benefit it shows. So if we land on Conchita, we're going to get two orange. Uh, and then we're going to be able to use a building associated with her tile. You can see that there are yellow, blue, and red buildings. Uh, also, there's going to be white buildings. And those are located underneath the yellow, blue, red, and white flowers on the board. You can use any one of the associated buildings. So for example, this we'd have to use a red one. There are three red buildings, and these are randomized at the beginning of each game. The three red buildings let me do different things. The first one here is going to let me flip over any one of these people, making them inactive and unable to be visited. And it's going to get me one money. The second one will get me one victory point, And the third one will let me trade a wood in in order to get, either, or to get one victory point and one money one time. So you would place your meeple on there, and you would get that ability. And then it would move to the next player's turn. And they're going to move, maybe they want to move further, they'll use a different building, and they'll get all the benefits for that until you get around to the first spot. If you decide to land on this first spot on your turn, you do not get any benefits from any of the people, and you don't get a benefit from the building. But what you do do is trigger a shipping round. Shipping rounds are going to let you sell goods. And you're going to do this in player order, selling goods that the boat demands. You'll see we need three tobacco, one, uh, sorry, three rum, one cigar, one tobacco, and one sugar. Well, the first player has the first choice of selling, and they get to choose which good they'd like to sell. They would show the goods from behind their board. Let's say I had three rum, and I would sell all of those. And the current victory points for rum, or for all goods, is two per, per good. So I would sell this, it would go all the way down to zero, and I would get six points. Now, if I wanted to sell some of them, maybe I only sold one, I would get two points. It would move on to the next player. And let's maybe say they sold a rum. They would get two points, they'd move it down to one. And you're going to keep doing this until everybody decides to pass, not selling any more goods. If all of these are reduced to zero, the ship is going to depart, and a new ship will come. 
And what you'll do at that point is you'll roll the dice, whoever triggered this will roll the dice. They will move this counter up one, showing that one ship has departed. And you'll move on to the next round of the game, choosing new dice to come out. You roll all these, place the new dice out. Let's say we have two, two, zero, and zero this round. And the next person will take their turn. You're going to go through seven rounds like this. But if you decide to skip this spot, moving over back to Martinez, for example, you're going to go and you're going to increase the value of goods by one. In this case, the next time you get around and the next time you trigger around, you're going to have three per good that you sell. And you can skip again the next time around in order to get a four. Or if you don't sell all of the potential goods that need to be shipped, you'll go up to four. And the ability to sell goods will become better as you get worth more victory points. Now this is also important because some buildings are going to allow you to sell goods outside of these sales rounds. So you'll see here, for example, uh, if we look at this building here, at any one point you can sell one good for two victory points. Granted, it doesn't increase the value, but you can sell things out of turn if people are trying to bump up the value of goods that maybe you aren't trying to sell. You're going to do this until you go through seven rounds, uh, seven rounds either being seven full shipments of goods, or if you go past four and you get to this checkered flag on the value, the ship will automatically leave and trigger a new round. At the end of these rounds, whoever has the most victory points from getting goods and trading them in, either for victory, point, victory points to the buildings or victory points on the ship, is going to be the winner. And there you have Santiago de Cuba. Now this is a pretty simple game. Uh, it's probably only medium weight. Uh, they call it medium by the Eggert Spiel or uh, Griffin Games difficulty paw level. It has two paws out of four. Uh, and it has bigger brothers in both Cuba and Havana, uh, which are both games along the similar theme with different mechanics and different weight. Uh, but this one's pretty light. You simply just move that car around, visit someone, pay more money if you want to move further, get the goods, and try and deliver them to that ship. And there is some strategy to be had in skipping the ship, trying to increase the value of goods that you're selling, uh, maybe trying to flip a building over so that one player can't use it, or limit a player uh, from going to specific places by depriving them of money. Uh, so it is, although it is a light game, there's some definite strategic depth to it uh, that can be enjoyed by both gamers and uh, new players alike. So if this sounds like something that's interesting to you, check out Santiago de Cuba from Eggert Spiel and Griffin Games. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find the latest board game news at Dicetowernews.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Fun Again Games, the world's best game source. Fun Again Games has over 5,000 games available. Check them out at funagain.com.